Gaily bedight, a gallant knight in sunshine and in shadow, had journeyed long singing a song in search of El Dorado. But he grew old this night so bold, and o'er his heart a shadow fell as he found no spot of ground that looked like El Dorado. And as his strength failed him at length, he met a pilgrim shadow. Shadow, said he, where can it be, this land of El Dorado? O'er the mountains of the moon, down the valley of the shadow. Ride, boldly ride, the shadow replied, if you seek for El Dorado. story time about the legend of El Dorado. If you haven't heard of it, you're going to hear about it now. I'll probably talk about some things you haven't heard before. Now, when I was in Ecuador, there's a legend there as well, but it's a different legend. Some people get it confused. And the legend in Ecuador is actually history. It's, it's known information. And what you had was the king of the Incas at the time and there were two, but we won't go into the details. Uh, his name was Atahuapa, and Francisco Pizarro, the Spanish, they came and they captured him. And what they did was they were holding him for ransom. And so the Incas gathered up the ransom, and the ransom was an agreed upon amount that was a large room filled from top to bottom with gold. Now it wasn't packed solid with gold, it was you know, gold chalices and gold ornaments, and but it was a huge amount of gold, billions of dollars worth in today's money. So they had to gather this up and then carry it to where the Spanish were holding it. Before they got there, the Spanish accidentally killed him. Well, the Incas heard about this as they're bringing the gold, and they said, well, we're not going to take the gold, he just killed our king. And so they got rid of the gold, and no one knows to this day where it is. And so there's all kinds of stories about the gold, but that's not El Dorado. It gets confused because in some of the uh, literature about El Dorado, which is in Colombia, most likely in Colombia, it mentions Quito, but it's not because it's there. That's not what the literature says, but you know, people were desperate and they can't find it in Colombia, so they've looked in Guyana, they've looked in Brazil, they've looked in Venezuela, and they've looked in Ecuador. Now, around 1300 BC, a large group of people migrated to the Andes near Bogota, Colombia. And then there was a second migration of these same people around 500 BC. So they worked out to a population of about three or four million, best anyone can tell. These were called the Muisca. Now the Muisca believed that their leaders had supernatural abilities. Essentially, they were almost on a level of a god. And the Muisca actually had three of these. But there was one in particular that the legend of El Dorado circles around. And the reason being is that when he was crowned king, there's a ritual that they go through. And the lake near Bogota, Lake Guatavita, this is where there's a lagoon and this is where it took place. And this has actually been proven out subsequently. What they did was they built this large raft. And I've got a picture of the raft done in gold by these people. God knows how long ago. They would put him on the raft along with these other uh, priests or whatever they were, monkey mucks, <laughs> the conductors of the ritual. And they would go out to the center of the lagoon. And before he would go out, he would pack his body with clay. And then on the clay, they would put gold dust so that the clay was there so it would stick to it. And it would harden. So this clay would be on his body and 
the gold dust would stick to it and he shimmered and shined. To the Muisca people, gold represented the energy of creation. It was a profound belief that they carried. And so you've got this guy, he's out there and he's covered in gold dust and he's out in the middle of this lagoon. And they would go through the ritual, he would, he would rinse off the clay, he would basically be reborn. And he would come back up out of the water and he would be on this raft. And when he did that, the people would all make all kinds of noise and shout and cheer. And they would have all of this gold that they would throw out, try to reach the raft. So all this gold went out there. There was a massive amount of gold. Columbia for some time was first or second in, in gold production. Now it's, it's below, below number 10, but there was a lot of gold here. There was a lot of gold throughout the Andes. In Peru, uh, the reason Atahuapa had so much gold was because there's just so much gold through the Andes. Now over time, this lake has been drained to try to discover what was going on. The first time they drained it, they drained it a couple meters down. And they found a small amount of gold, but the lake was much, much deeper. So this was just along the edges. The second time that they drained it, they drained it considerably more. I believe it was about 20 meters down. And they found about three times as much gold. And the third time they drained it, by building a canal and actually draining it down, they found more gold, but the problem was there was about three or four feet of this kind of quagmire mud that they just couldn't work with. They couldn't get through, and then the sun came and hardened it up, and it was like concrete. So they've never been able to do it. And now uh, Bogota, or the Colombian government, has uh, caused this to be a protected area. So no one can any longer do any kind of discovery or investigation of this lake. Now in the 1500s, there were some writings that came out about this land of El Dorado, the city of El Dorado. And there's a question of what was the original meaning. And if you trace it back, the original meaning, the golden man. And then the second iteration of this meaning was the golden king. The third iteration was the Golden Kingdom, and the fourth iteration was the Golden Empire. So as time went on, the story just kind of grew. But originally it was the Golden Man, and they were talking about the man who went out for his ritual and then returned the king. But when they talk about the city of El Dorado, they're talking about further iterations. They're talking about how the story grew but it really goes back to the man. So it wasn't originally written about, and the original information was not about it being the, the city of El Dorado. It was about this man, except where he lived, the focal point of this guy was where there's supposed to be a massive amount of gold. And we know where this guy was, we know where his people were. And I'll put up on a map where you can see it. But if you can imagine back in the 1500s where you didn't have Wikipedia, <laughs> the information was all over the board. People had all kinds of uh, stories about it and they would, they would add to it. It would just become just more fantastic. But it was known all over the world, basically, or at least the Western world. As a matter of fact, you've heard of Sir Walter Raleigh. He took an expedition up into Colombia, through Venezuela, to Guyana, looking for El Dorado. There was an expedition by the Germans, who had Spanish with them. And then you had a massive expedition sent by Pizarro of conquistadors, specifically throughout Colombia. By the 1800s, people had come to the conclusion, because it wasn't you know, they hadn't found this city, they came to a conclusion that it was all just a myth. The earliest known writing about this was something called El Carnero. And this was a book of about 600 pages that talked about any number of things. It was just kind of a mishmash of the guy that wrote it. It had poetry in there. But he talked about what he had learned from the people in Colombia about El Dorado and the, the story of the, of the ceremony and the clay and the gold, that's the source for that. Now the Muisca people 
still existed. As a matter of fact, today there's some hundreds of them. But back around the uh, 15, 1600s, they, they still existed. And so the tradition was mostly verbal stories. Now, they did have a writing system, and I'll put that up too. I think it's pretty interesting that they had a writing system, although it's just a bunch of scribbles, and I guess you'd have to be pretty good to make out what's what here. And then, of course, I began this with the Edgar Allan Poe poem, which you may remember a John Wayne movie called El Dorado, where James Caan, who played the role of Mississippi, throughout the movie kept reciting parts of this poem. And I've always loved John Wayne, and I, I really liked that movie. It had Robert Mitchum playing this great role. But the idea, the concept of El Dorado has captured the imagination of people for many hundreds of years, uh, beginning with the Spanish, but you know, the Germans and the, and the English and anybody who, there'd been any number of uh, since expeditions trying to locate this city of El Dorado. Now, judging from the amount of gold, which in today's money would be maybe four or five hundred thousand dollars that they found in this lake, it's pretty reasonable to say that that's, you know, that's a confirmation of what this story was. And it's funny how in history our myths usually end up to be mostly true. And so it's very re reasonable to assume that. And so the idea of all the gold that existed back then because of the way they revered it, it it's pretty um, probable. And where did all this gold go? So that's, you know, that's one of the questions. Of course, the Spanish took a lot of gold out. One last thing I'll have to say about this is the people the Muisca people used gold in their daily life. It wasn't, it wasn't this uh, precious metal the way we see it. It was something that they would use for jewelry. They would use it for, for cups, chalices. They would use it for ornamentation. It was a, it was a common item. It wasn't all that scarce, uh, but it did represent this energy of creation. And so everybody wanted to have their piece of the pie. So that's the legend of El Dorado in a nutshell. And the legend is essentially based on historical writings. It's probably true. It's just it probably isn't this big empire or this gigantic city made of gold. So welcome to Columbia. I hope you enjoyed that little story. And I'll see you next video. O'er the mountains of the moon, down the valley of the shadow. Ride, boldly ride, the shadow replied, if you seek for El Dorado.